Gear Seekers are Nick. Usually about midway through a GPU cycle, we get a little bit of a refresh. Nvidia has a brand new card called the RTX 4070 Ti Super. It's an absolute tongue twister of a name. And to be honest, a lot of people thought that there was no way that Nvidia would just have such a weird name for a GPU. What's not a tongue twister though is hitting that subscribe button or maybe even just a little quick like if you're, if you're there, come on guys. The card that we're focusing on in this video is the MSI Ventus 3X OC variant. This wasn't our first choice as MSI accidentally sent us the OC variant and not the MSRP version that we were supposed to get. Because Nvidia typically has two embargoes for GPUs, we're a day later than we want it to be. Nvidia reached out and they said the day before that there was a bit of a problem with the MSRP version. It had a slight performance issue with the VBIOS. Luckily, we had the OC version and we were not affected by that issue. This new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super is built on the Ada Lovelace architecture using the 8103 die, not the 8104 like the 4070 Ti. The 4070 Ti Super has more in common with the 4080 than it does with the 4070 Ti. And I'll come back to this a little bit later though because it does get a bit interesting with the architecture. The Super variant also has a memory bump of 16 gigs of VRAM compared to the 12 gigs of the 4070 Ti. So there is that as well. In terms of the power delivery for the 4070 Ti Super, the one that we've got here uses the 12 volt high power connector, which is no surprise here. This is most NVIDIA cards that we're seeing at the moment. As far as power consumption, we thought we'd add this one in a little bit earlier than usual, but the 4070 Ti Super that we've got here, which is the MSI variant, pulled around about 285 watts at full tilt over our stress testing period of about an hour. As far as testing the 4070 Ti Super, we retested a bunch of other graphics cards that we've already tested, but we did that on our new i9-14900K testbench. We typically test in both Windows and Linux to give you an understanding of whereabouts the performance sits with these GPUs, but this video is Windows only for now. We're in the process of retesting everything, like I just said. On average, each GPU takes around about two hours to test, and I'm just one man over here testing GPUs. We're also including 1080p benchmarks because this is something that you guys have requested. We did a little bit of a poll on YouTube communities not too long ago, and you guys still want to see those results. So. With that said, let's kick it off with the 1080p benchmarks. Remember, at 1080p though, we are still quite CPU bound, but again, you guys did ask for it. So let's jump into the first one. This is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. We tested on ultra settings with either DLSS or FSR 3, and we set that to the balance setting with both of these using their respective frame generation technologies, depending on the GPU. I hope all that makes sense. In this test, we're seeing the 4070 Ti Super coming in just behind the RTX 4080 and pull quite far ahead of the 4070 Ti and the Radeon 7900 XT. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077. We wanted to test the RT overdrive performance here. RT meaning ray tracing. This one is pretty interesting and for the AMD testing, we use the beta drivers that enables frame generation, but as you can see in this graph here, the NVIDIA GPUs dominate with ray trace applications, and it's kind of always been this way. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the RTX 4070 Ti Super coming in right between the 4080 and the 4070 Ti. This is exactly where you would expect to see the 4070 Ti Super. On to Unigen Superposition, we like this benchmark because the 1080p Extreme benchmark that we use here is extremely GPU bound and it's a very good DX11 benchmark. Again, we see the RTX 4070 Ti Super sitting right between the 4080 and the 4070 Ti. What's interesting though is the 7900 XT trails by about five FPS. I honestly thought that the 7900 XT might perform a little bit better here in this benchmark, but you know, it is what it is. Finally, onto Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see the same trend again with the RTX 4070 Ti Super sitting dead smack in the middle of the RTX 4080 and the 4070 Ti. Next, onto 1440p benchmarks. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, we tested the same way that we did with 1080p using their respective frame generation technologies and FSR or DLSS based on the card. In this test, we're seeing the 4070 Ti Super be within spitting distance on the RTX 4080. This is a good result here because this is a game that I play quite a lot, so it is good to see. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077. We tested the same way that we tested with our 1080p with frame generation enabled for both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. But again, you can see that 
the NVIDIA GPUs just dominate with ray trace applications. AMD has a bit of a ways to go with ray tracing performance. The 4070 Ti Super comes in just behind the 4080 in this test as well, which is pretty interesting to see. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the RTX 4070 Ti Super coming in right between the 4080 and the 7900 XT, making the 4070 Ti Super a bit stronger than the 7900 XT. But we're not seeing the whole story here just yet. Onto Unigen Superposition, we test this one at 1440p custom with motion blur and depth of field disabled. This one is pretty CPU bound at 1440p. We like this one because even though it's CPU bound, really fast GPUs really show their strengths here. The RTX 4080 performs ahead of every other GPU in the pack. Well, there's no surprises here, leaving basically everything else in the dust. The 4070 Ti Super is only a few frames faster than the 4070 Ti in this instance. So that's a pretty interesting one to go into. Finally, onto Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 4070 Ti Super sits right between the RTX 4080 and the 7900 XT, with the RTX 4080 being significantly faster than the 4070 Ti Super. Wow, that is getting a bit tongue twisty, guys. On to 4K benchmarks, this is where we start to see things change a little bit. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, we tested the same way we did with 1080p and 1440p. Not only that, with COD, you can set a VRAM target and it's best to set it to around about 70%, especially at higher resolutions. Any higher and you're gonna run into performance issues. I have literally hundreds of hours in this game, so I know all about COD's quirks when it comes to performance. In this test, we're seeing the 7900 XT pulling away from the rest of the pack, even beating out the RTX 4080, which is, which is kind of nice for AMD, but it doesn't tell the whole story in the rest of the benchmarks because in Cyberpunk 2077, we tested the same way that we did with 1080p and 1440p with frame generation enabled for their respective technologies. And again, the NVIDIA GPUs just smash AMD here with ray tracing. Now, the reason why we're testing like this with ray tracing is because you guys have wanted to see ray trace performance with Cyberpunk and RT Overdrive is what NVIDIA claims to be like the be all and end all of ray tracing. So. You know, why not put AMD GPUs up against it as well, right? It makes sense. That's what you guys wanted to see. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the RTX 4070 Ti coming in right between the 4080 and the 7900 XT, making the 4070 Ti Super a bit stronger than the 7900 XT. On to Unigen Superposition, we test this one with the 4K optimized preset. We see the RTX 4070 Ti Super once again sitting in that spot between the 4070 Ti and the 4080. And lastly, onto Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 4070 Ti Super sits right between the 4080 and the 7900 XT, with the RTX 4080 being significantly faster than the next card in the pack. And again, this is similar to what we saw with 1440p. It shows that the 4070 Ti Super scales well, even at higher resolutions. That's probably more to do with the increased 16 gigs of VRAM. Moving on to our one hour stress test in ID64, we couldn't get the MSI GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super Ventus 3X OC above 66 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. We also recorded the hotspot temperature here and it didn't reach higher than 78 degrees. This is pretty decent thermal performance if I'm being honest. The argument can be had that our ambient temperature is quite low, but it's the middle of summer here and 18 degrees is optimal. We always have it at 18 degrees. We observe the MSI RTX 4080 Ti Super Ventus 3X OC to be not audible over our stress testing period with zero coil line. I'm saying that this card was dead silent. On an open air test system like the one we've got here, sound cannot hide. The card was dead silent. Now our acoustic observations make more sense for normal users than actual measurements because they don't tell the full story based on environmental factors, right? If I'm telling you it's quiet, it's generally pretty quiet. What are my thoughts on the RTX 4070 Ti Super overall? Well, you have to remember something really important about the 4070 Ti, if we wanna go back to that launch. They initially named that card the 4080 12 gig, where it was nowhere near 4080 performance. In fact, it wasn't even based on the same die, so I'm not sure why they called it that. 
I'd say that the 4070 Ti Super is closer to being a 4080 variant, basically because it's based on the same die and it's got more CUDA cores. I don't, I'm not sure what Nvidia was thinking with the 4070 Ti being a, a 4080 12 week. Anyway, being that the 4070 Ti Super is based on the same die, it adds more CUDA cores. It's also got more memory and a wider memory interface. I'd say that the issue isn't so much as that the 4070 Ti Super exists. It's the fact that the 4070 Ti existed in the first place. It was a pretty poorly received GPU. We even thought it was one of the most pointless GPUs ever. They didn't need to be a 4070 Ti in the first place. What the 4070 Ti Super does though is kind of fight back at AMD with the Radeon 7900 XT. In a lot of our testing, the 4070 Ti and the 7900 XT was pretty close in performance. What the 4070 Ti Super does is claw some of that performance back while adding more VRAM. Sure, the Radeon 7900 XT has 20 gigs of VRAM, but in applications like Cyberpunk with ray tracing, it's a clear winner. The 4070 Ti Super wins hands down. Here's the conundrum though. Sure, you could buy a 4070 Ti, a 7900 XT, or a 4070 Ti Super right now. And in all honesty, you're gonna be pretty happy with the performance. The pricing aside though, they all perform pretty well. But if pricing is brought into that equation, I would say based on what we know right now with the upcoming 4080 Super, I'd wait, it's only a week. Why would you spend money right now when you don't really know the full story with these super refreshes? Here's the benefit of the 4080 Super though that maybe some people won't talk about. When it comes out, the 4080 will drop in price so you could potentially snag a good deal in a 4080. And given what we saw in our testing, the 4080 is significantly faster in almost every single way. Here's where this gets thrown all out of whack though. We know that MSRP cards for these non-founders launches are available. Most people would consider an OC version because to be honest, MSRP cards might not be that easy to get. They'll be pretty hard to come by, which means you're potentially spending anywhere from 60 to $150 more for an RTX 4070 Ti Super. And that's for the non MSRP OC card. If you're willing to spend that money, why not spend a little bit extra money and try and get a 4080 on clearance when the 4080 Super launches, because the prices will come down. If not, I think the 4070 Super, based on our testing that you saw in this video, we have the Founders card. Even at 4K, the 4070 Super is not terrible value. I'm, I'm gonna call it now. The 4070 Ti Super is one of the most boring GPUs we've seen from Nvidia in a long while. And that was kind of the same thing with the 4070 Ti. It's in such a weird place for performance for gaming, where these cards will probably offer some better value is in content creation workloads with additional CUDA cores. Otherwise, I'm gonna say it, skip the 4070 Ti Super for now, because it just, it doesn't really make that much sense right now. That said, if you're interested in the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super cards, they start at 799 USD at MSRP. The version that we've got here will probably be a little bit higher in price. I would guess between maybe 50 to 70 US dollars more. That's what we typically see with OC cards. Overall, I'm not really excited about this card in general. I haven't been excited for a GPU in a while. What I will say is I'm more interested in the 4080 Super performance considering the 4080 Super is replacing the 4080 in Nvidia's lineup. We'll be talking more about that next week when we know the full story. That's when I'll be able to show you everything that we know so far. So make sure you're subscribed and you chuck us a quick like while you're at it, since it really does help us out a lot with supporting the channel. Just by clicking those two things, you can change our lives or change yours. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. Tell us what you hated about the video, what you disliked, and all that stuff. I'm your boy, Nick from Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. Let us know what you think about this 4070 Ti Super down below in the comment section. And now you can watch a video here or not. It's completely up to you. Hey, maybe I'll put up the video where we revisited the 4090 after a year. That was pretty interesting. Saw some pretty cool results with that GPU after a year. Thanks for watching.